Hello, everybody. Um, I just had a request the other day just for some driving videos by some of our um, foreign viewers, I think from Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they were just curious as to, you know, what the roads and stuff look like around here uh, in um, the Melbourne Palm Bay area as I cruise back out towards uh, Camp Freedom 2 and had um, done a request for me to just film some um, segments of me driving. And um, that's what I'm doing. We're uh, currently on Babcock Street, heading towards um, Camp Freedom 2. And we're getting ready to hit a junction here called um, the Malabar Road. Actually, yeah, we're going by Port Malabar here. And we're going to hit Malabar Road coming up here. But this just gives you an idea as to what the roads look like in this town. Uh, most American towns are very similar. Um, it's an average, typical Florida town. Now, if you go to another state, the roads and the houses and stuff may look slightly different. Well, actually, quite a bit different than Florida homes. But um, this is the area where I live right now. And I'm actually um, heading back out to the camp today to um, do some exploring. Um, I uploaded or will upload a couple videos here showing aerial views of Camp Freedom 2 and the hut and um, was using Google Maps to survey the area to look for things that might be interesting and worth checking out on the ground. So today's plan is to get out there and produce some segments where I actually explore those areas that I saw on um, Google Maps that look interesting. Of, of particular interest is um, at Camp Freedom 2, to the right of the hut, there appears to be some kind of structure. I don't know if it is truly a structure or just an open area or trees, but on Google Maps, it shows up as this big gray thing that is approximately the size of the hut, maybe a little bit larger. So one of today's goals is to cut back through there and take a look and see what the heck that is, because I'm curious. Um, the hut itself, when I first got there, the location for the hut, had somebody living there. I mean, they went, weren't li actively living there when I got there because there was nobody there, but they had lived there prior because the, um, the boards that I ended up using to make the roof for the hut were actually part of somebody's like wooden tent that they put up. They basically took the two by fours and braced them up into a triangle, like an A-frame, and had um, the carpet. Maybe I'll show you the carpet if it's still out there. But there was some kind of carpet that they laid down underneath that I think they laid down on. And I'm pretty sure someone was living out there because they had um, um, containers, some plastic containers, kind of like bowls, that they were using to catch water. So, that's what was originally at Camp Freedom 2. And, you know, when I was there, I was like, huh, looks like uh, this was an abandoned camp that somebody did actually live at at one time. But I felt that they had been long gone. So, as far as how the, the camp itself got constructed was there was wood and other components already there. Somebody had um, taken um, a... Um, deck, a wooden deck, a pool deck, or a backyard deck that was a raised deck, and they had cut it in half, like almost exactly down the center. And that's what ended up becoming the wall to the hut. So because the materials were there at that location, that's how I ended up picking that spot to become the home base for Camp Freedom 2. It wasn't that I found the spot and brought all the materials. It was that the material was already there, at least the majority of it, the, the big part, you know, that became the walls and the roofing. So I originally just took those materials and said, you know what, it might be kind of fun um, since I was still stuck in Florida at the time, ready to start my road trip, which by the way still hasn't occurred. Um, I figured I would go ahead and keep myself busy working on the, um, the hut for fun and just to give viewers something more interesting to watch than me just driving around Brevard County back and forth in my little mini circuit loop that I had discussed when all this was going on. So 
basically, I built the hut using those components. Then, if, if you've been watching the series from the beginning, you know that I didn't really live out there. I just sort of went out there to hang out and rest out there and just chill because it gave me some shade and it was some privacy because hardly anyone goes out there. Um, you know, some of the others would go through there and they did encounter me there at the camp while I was at the camp. Uh, so I used uh, Camp Freedom 2 in the hut as a sanctuary, a refuge for me to um, go in my van and just park there and open up all the doors and windows and just chill. And I could cook out there, I could have music out there, I even watched movies out there. It was kind of like a home base uh, because I didn't really have a home. You know, I was actually in the van. The van was my home at the time. So Camp Freedom 2 was built primarily as a, a home base for me to work on my vehicle and do whatnot out there without being bothered. Now since then it has expanded quite a bit. Uh, if you've been following along you'll know that um, the camp now has a working bathroom and um, water catchment system. Uh, it's also been stockpiled with food and water for anyone who happens to go by there and needs it. I have left some components such as a rice cooker and other items that um, a person passing through may find handy and can take. Some people were asking me, you know, if I'm afraid of somebody coming by and destroying everything. Well, if they come by and destroy everything, then they come by and destroy everything, which to me would be sad, you know. Um, I built it so they can take whatever they need. I built it so whoever visits has a place of refuge um, just to get away from everybody and um, chill for a while and it's got you know supplies there like a working bathroom and stuff for somebody going out there so they can use it so if somebody is stupid or crazy or whatever and destroys it then they destroy it you know I'm not gonna worry about it if I can fix it again I'll fix it if not I'll just let it be um, I try not to worry too much about the future or look too far ahead. And some of you say, well, you gotta have a plan for the future. Well, there was a time when I had a plan for my future. And some of you, you know, are questioning um, things that have been going on, uh, which I'll do another little video here, heart to heart talk with all my viewers because I've upset some of you and I do apologize for that. And some of you actually feel that I am um, lying to you and a scammer and whatnot, and I don't understand how you could feel that, uh, given that I pretty much let everyone know what's happening as it's happening. But just as some people could not believe that, you know, initially, until they actually might have seen the episode where the cougar showed up, when I talked about being stalked by the cougar, and her, um, they thought I was making things up or just crazy or whatever, or when I you know, was doing the segment there and the helicopter was crashing even as I was filming. Um, it's unbelievable stuff. So, I um, don't really script the series. This is just kind of trying to show people what it was like living in a van. And of course, now that I'm not living in a van, I let people know that, you know. Um, if, if you are contributing money or, or aid or support or whatever because you want me to live in a van, um, I, from the very beginning, I have told you, I did not live in the van this, this go around by choice. This was a necessity. This was an emergency shelter. I had, um, been living with my, um, girlfriend and, you know, who ended up breaking up with me last summer. And that's how I ended up full time in the van on an emergency basis and was about to just give up and leave. And if you watch the vlog from um, day one, you know, the first entry, you're going to see what led up to this situation. The plan for me was never to live in a van full time permanently. Um, I do like living in a van. I enjoy living and traveling in a van. But my goals, which are still the same, is always to try to find land somewhere and build my own property. The whole idea of all the construction and everything that's been going on was just so that I could, um, practice some skills, you know, survival type skills, things that I might need because if I end up getting land, I may end up getting land out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, it have to be land that I can afford 
And in a way, I want it kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I'm um, wanting some solitude, you know, not just by myself, but with my family. I, um, at that time, my family pretty much consisted of just me and my two children, but they would most likely stay with their mother. So for me, it would have just been to purchase a little bit of land somewhere and put up a little hut or a cabin and live out there and try to make room for my children to come visit. That's assuming it was around this area, but that dream was so far off, you know, I i wasn't actively looking to buy land or anything because I don't even have any money. Um, so the, the situation was just to survive and we're still in that mode. Some people feel that, you know, I've had a girlfriend all this time, I've had a, a wife or whatever all this time, then they obviously are not a very trusting person by their nature and I don't know how they can watch my channel and not see that this is not staged, that everything is real, that um, I've been um, informing people of the situation even as it's happening. Um, oh, I'm gonna adjust this here. Anyhow, we are um, riding towards Camp Freedom 2 and you can kind of see my route that I'm taking today here. Um, this road right here, if you're wanting to know you know, we're currently on, uh, I think we're on Malabar Road, and we're going to turn on to uh, Minton Road.